Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I'm going to be talking about destroying your sensitive data right after this. I'm not going to destroy your sensitive data, but I am going to help you clean up data on drives that you are planning to discard. Uh, maybe that shiny new hard drive that you bought six years ago is starting to make all kinds of noises, and uh, it's starting to rattle, and you can you can hear the heads are kind of shimmering uh, where they'll reread something, and so you know there's some bad things that's going on with the uh, with that drive, and it's. It may be showing up in your uh, utilities to say, "Hey, you've got, you know, this the wear level on this on this particular drive is approaching its end of life." But you have data on it, so how do you how do you deal with that? And also, you might have it on an SSD, you might have it on an NVMe. Those are all areas where we store data today. So what do we do if we wanted to we want to discard the drive and not and not leave our data available to someone to pick it off? So some tools that you may know, there's a CC Cleaner for Windows. Uh, in addition to doing, I think it does secure erase, but it also cleans up your temporary files. It cleans up the disk space and, and frees up some disk space by going through and deleting files that you didn't even know you had, which are no longer associated with running applications. And it does some other stuff like managing your registry and stuff like that. Uh, but it's really designed to return your machine to the, the speed it once had. Uh, there's also bleach bit and that comes up a lot uh, kind of a, as a uh, as, as kind of a first thought uh, mainly because of the press that it's had over the past couple of years uh, it is that one is in the category of secure erase so that is securely erasing files <clears throat> it runs on Linux it runs on Windows I'm not sure if it runs on Mac um, but it may I just don't know uh, but it's designed also, besides doing secure erase, it also frees up file caches, it deletes cookies, it clears the internet history on your local machine, but it won't do anything about the internet history that your ISP is tracking. Uh, it will shred temporary files, it deletes logs and so forth, and it's open source. So you can use it without charge. Uh, you see BleachBet showing up a lot on security-oriented distributions. So. Uh, for what it does, I mean, it it, uh, it it is popular. Let's put it that way. But I really have to put that into the category of of utilities that overwrite the the file on disk securely. So what about the remove command? I have that. Doesn't that just delete my files? I'm I'm good, right? I just use the remove and I'm good to go. Nope. Mm -mm. Sorry, it doesn't delete your data. All it does is pop the inode table for your file, but it leaves your data sitting on disk right where it was. Uh, it will mark it as free uh, and so, and space that can be reused, but unfortunately, the you don't you know you can't rely on that as a method to make sure that it's actually cleaning all the data off. One of the utilities that I believe is belongs to a class of packages called Secure Disk. Um, and uh, it's called Shred. It's been around for a while, and it goes through a whole series of, of writes and rewrites over and over on the uh, on top of the file that's being deleted. And so it takes a while to run. But again, it's doing an overwrite of the file, and it's assuming that that data is in the same place. So in, in other words, I'm writing to the same place where the data exists, Unfortunately, uh, on modern file systems, that isn't necessarily the case. Uh, a lot of drives and a lot of file systems today do not overwrite this, the data in, in the same place. Instead, because they're journaled, for one thing. So, yeah, they don't do that because otherwise there'd be no way to recover it. Also, the journal itself would contain your old data. So, yeah. So, anyway, it's not, it's not a reliable method today to use. Uh, and so it kind of makes that method kind of worthless today. It was written back in the days of MFM where you could reliably be sure, you know, fairly assured that if you overwrite the file, <clears throat> you would get the data and you would obliterate it. Uh, however, I know that with modern forensic techniques that it is possible to still retrieve and extract the data. 
Uh, that's, that's how a lot of these disk recovery uh, uh, places survive, is the ability to be able to recover the data after a mass deletion like that. But file systems like JFS and RiserFS, XFS, EXT3, EXT4, sorry, there's no guarantee that it will get your data. It will get it all. File systems which take snapshots like NFS and ZFS and ButterFS, no, sorry. Again, no guarantee that it's going to get all your data because it doesn't deal with those. Uh, file systems that cache in temporary locations like NFS, nope, won't get that one either. It's uh, because it's looking at the location of the file on the disk, and it's not, not taking into account that there may be other areas where that data is stored. If the file system is compressed, it won't get it. Uh, also, if it's a RAID, it'll have really a lot hard, difficult time to get it off of a RAID. So yeah, those are one of the more harder ones to delete from. But so Shred is not a very good utility for today's world. It was at one time, but not anymore. So, OK, what about the DD tool? I mean, I, I can put in the uh, in input file, I can put uh, dev random, and in the output file, I can put the name of my file. That's going to work, right? Well, again, you're assuming that, that DD is going to do a write in place, and you're assuming that the file system under it is going to honor that write in place command, which many of them do not, as we've just discussed. So that's not really a good option either, because there's no guarantee that DD will get all the places where the data is stored. Uh, there's also wipe, which is also a, mem a member, and it securely erases files in Linux. However, it only works on magnetic media. It won't work for SSDs and NVMe. So uh, for modern file systems today, it's in my, uh, modern media to host your file systems, it won't work. Uh, and, and it also is an overwrite solution. So it suffers from the same problems as the others. None of these utilities will take into account the modern file systems. Now, uh, let's, let's try a couple more. So SPHIL is probably one of the more newer ones. So it was, written, it was designed to address this problem. Uh, and what it is trying to do is it's securely trying to erase the free space on your drive. So in other words, it's going to go through, and any place that's marked as free, it's going to write random data over top of it and hopefully we'll get a deleted file in the process, right? That's the idea. So yeah, it'll only work on free space <clears throat> and it over, over, only overlays that with random data. So if a file is deleted, it'll hunt it down and it'll write it all, all over the free space that is marked. <clears throat> it's supposed to work on magnetic media and SSDs as well, and I'm, I'm sure it would. However, it's still a no-go. There are some file systems where it won't work because they manage the free space. They don't tell the kernel where the free space is. They, like EXT and FFS are two that come to mind. There are others. Uh, NFS does it because of its caching in uh, temporary locations. RAID because it doesn't track files. And SWAP because that sits in its own partition and, and it does contain data. It does contain data uh, that is swapped out of memory. So, so you can't, you, you know, you, you might leave a jigsaw puzzle for somebody to put together, but your data is still going to be available to someone who's determined to get to get it. So, all right, so there's a utility called SS Swap or S Swap, and that's designed to delete data from your swap partition. But if you have a swap file, I don't think that works. I think the only thing this can do is delete files out of a partition. Uh, I, I did not see in the documentation or the man pages where they, they said it'll work on swap files. They, all the examples they give are deleting it from swap partitions. So I don't use that utility, but if you know something different from what the manual pages say, let me know. Uh, yeah, it's possible that maybe it does, but uh, <clears throat> the way it works is you have to unmount your swap partition and turn it off or turn it off and then unmount it. And then, otherwise you may crash your system. And then you can run SWAP against the partition that was in place and then it will obliterate it completely. Uh, then that leaves the, that, the data that is in memory. And there's been people that have demonstrated, you know, super cooling the chips down to very cold temperatures and then ripping them out of the machine and sticking them in another machine and getting the data extracted before the RAM decays. 
So yeah, that's kind of a yeah, that's that's kind of a really determined effort to get your data. But yeah, there's a utility that deals with that too, and it's called SD Mem. Uh, and that wipes memory securely. Uh, but it does not remove memory from your cache in the CPU, which we know has been used as a source to extract data in, in the Spectre meltdown, uh, for example. Uh, also, SD memory is slow, and it's also in beta. So how well that works, I'm not trying it on my system, but hey, if you want to, go right ahead. So, oh, wait a minute, you left out D-Band, uh, Derek's boot and nuke utility. It has over 20 erasure standards. Uh, however, it doesn't work on SSDs. It works on uh, magnetic media only. It claims to be approved by the DOD 5220.2M and NIST 800.88. Well, that's nice, but for the Department of Defense, those are obsolete standards. Uh, so yeah, great, good luck. Uh, I wouldn't count on that. <laughs> so yeah, but you're still not getting it. Overriding and that utility overrides is worthless. It doesn't work not reliably. So, okay, what about degaussing? Well, degaussing will work to some degree on magnetic drives, but the denser drives today where the, uh, the poles are running uh, vertically, not, they used to lay them out horizontally on the disk and degaussing would work very well on those drives. But today with them running vertically into the platter, degaussing doesn't reach deep enough to get them. So. You can, it is possible to forensically lift data on, on, on a severely degaussed drive today uh, just because of the way it's stored. So, plus, degaussing doesn't really work on SSDs too well. Um, so, yeah, degaussing can leave data on the drive, and it's an obsolete technology today. It's not used uh, as a reliable means of destroying data. So, what, what is? Well, you could burn the drive, but you know that's not very environmentally friendly. Uh, plus, you're you know not only you're throwing heavy metal oxides up into the air, which we would all be breathing, which we don't really want to do. Um, you know, you have to consider that iron. Okay, maybe that's not so bad, but there are other bad things on the on those drives as well, uh, particularly the circuit boards that are in them, and also some of the drive materials themselves are not probably real healthy. But uh, yeah, that's probably not the first choice for, that I would take. Shredding the drive, however, is a viable method. And there are companies that you can take your drives to, and they can be, they can be magnetic, they can be SSDs, they can be NVMEs, and they will shred them into dust. They, it's, not, it's not like a paper shredder, it's more like a grinder. It just grinds them into dust. And then they'll take that dust and they'll recycle it so that they'll make new drives out of it. So that's probably a better way. Now, if you have two inch drives, a lot of those are made with ceramic disks. So if you want to you want to uh, shred those, you can just hit them with a hammer and they will just go into a powder. They'll just break into a powder. Uh, and that is a fairly reliable way of shredding those. But if you're in doubt, take those to the shredder as well. They, they charge a small fee. I don't know what that is offhand. But it, you know, it's far less expensive than buying the shredder itself. There are some enterprises that you go through enough drives during a year to make it worthwhile for them to buy their own shredders. Uh, but I think they're they're in the twenties of thousands of dollars. I think they're twenty thousand and up for those kinds of machines that do this. Plus, you probably need some hearing protection if you're going to be around them all day because the. Uh, the grinder is really high pitched, uh, at least the ones I have heard. I wouldn't want to be around that and, and risk losing my hearing after a while. So yeah, that works and that's probably the most reliable method that I can recommend to you. Uh, if uh, I would not rely on the other ones though, in, in this day and age, overwriting files, it's not going to work. It's not reliable. Uh, forensically, your data can be lifted. So. Uh, all I wanted to talk about today, and uh, uh, was this is Security Friday after all, and so I wanted to, I wanted to touch on this one. Uh, it, there's a lot of claims by people that their products work, but uh, yeah, there's also a lot of claims by the file system that it won't give them the data that they need in order for their files, their their, uh, their technology to work. So, hope you enjoyed this topic today, and if you did, please like and subscribe, and hope to see you again real soon. And, Bye for now.